Hello and welcome to this video detailing the latest update for Sage 200 Professional. On the back of our last huge release where we added over 30 different web accessible screens to the software amongst other things, we are continuing our push to deliver a more contemporary, streamlined and ultimately user-friendly Sage 200 solution. This will support you working from home, in the field and the office by allowing anytime access to your business critical data. In this release, we are introducing the ability to access your sales order list. From here, you can create, view and amend quotations and sales orders easily. Now, whether you're in the office, working from home or even visiting a customer, you can access these screens on any web enabled device and build a quotation or sales order in seconds. Before we start the demonstration, here's a quick reminder on how to access the web forms. Within the program, you can navigate to the tools menu, then click show web portal in browser. If you don't have the program installed on your PC or wish to access via a web enabled device such as a tablet, please consult the in product help files to set up user access. Once logged in, you can get access to Sage City and collaborate with other Sage 200 users. You can find out what's coming up in future updates by selecting our roadmap. You can have your say on new releases and you can see the popular topics we've been asked about at the moment. Let's start the demonstration now and we'll begin by looking at creating a quotation. If we navigate to sales order processing, quotations, then new quotation, we'll save this screen. From here, we can select whether this is a customer account or a potential new customer using the prospect account option. If I select this customer, then we can see that this particular account is on hold. You can still create the quotation for this account and send it to the customer, but you won't be able to convert it to a sales order until the account status has been changed. With that in mind, we'll raise a quotation for a different customer. You can see that when you select the customer account, any account alerts that have been set up in Sage 200 are pulled through. Within this section, there is also the option to copy an existing quotation and to set up a new customer account if required. To the right, we can see the date the quotation was raised, the date delivery was requested and promised, and the expiry date of the quotation should that be needed. The expiry date is a new feature and especially handy as you can add it as a column on the sales orders list to give you an instant view of your quotations which are about to expire, allowing you to prioritize these when following up with customers. We can also see who the quotation was taken by, the priority this customer has when placing orders, and their order number if applicable. Moving down, in the Quotation Details tab, we can see the Suggested Items box. Clicking here will give us a list of items that this customer has bought recently or has set as a preferred item against their account. We'll add a recently bought item to our quotation. If we look to add a second item to the quotation, we can see the options available. We have Standard or Stock Items, Free Text, Charge and Comment. These are the same options that you will see in the installed version of Sage 200 Professional and work in exactly the same way. We'll just add a carriage charge for the delivery of our item here. Now that we're happy with the quotation, we can choose to save it or use the option to save and print the document. This will provide you with a PDF version of the quotation that you can then attach to an email and send directly from your device. Now, in the ideal world, the quotation is accepted and then you can convert this to a sales order and eventually a sales invoice. However, in the real world, the sales process tends to be not so straightforward. Your potential customer may have a series of questions that they need answered before they're prepared to go ahead, or you may need to check in with them to see if they're ready to go. For any correspondence that you need to record regarding this quotation, you can use the Memo tab. Here, you can record any calls you've made to the customer, any questions that they've asked or plans of action that you may have agreed. This way, before you contact the customer, you can open the quotation and see a complete history of the correspondence that's occurred previously, allowing you to present a position of knowledge on their situation. Another new feature we can see here is the option to set the quotation status. You can see whether the quote is live or lost, allowing you to report on the quotations you've lost out on and see where you can improve in the future. So what if you don't need to raise a quotation first and you have a customer that's just placed an order with you? This is just as quick and easy. Navigate to the sales order processing menu then select sales orders, then new sales order. 
Here we'll see a screen that looks very similar to the new quotation screen. We've just seen how the suggested item button works, so let's just manually add an item this time. You'll notice that as soon as we add the item, the alt and cross cell columns become live. This is because this particular item has an alternative item and potential cross cell items registered against it. So, if you don't have the ordered item in stock, you could suggest an alternative item that may be just as useful to your customer. If this item is usually sold along with other stock items, then you can use the cross sell functionality to add these to your current order. This functionality is also available in the new quotation screen that we saw earlier. When creating a quotation or a sales order, it's now possible to view the order line discount breakdown. Now the salesperson can immediately see and apply discounts expected by the customer proactively responding to their needs. Plus, it provides sales managers insights into how discounts are used and the impact on revenues and pipeline. The last new feature I want to show you is the added ability to change the column views within your web screen to allow you to see just the information that you want. This way, you can adapt your web screen view to work in a way which works for you, boosting productivity, improving customer interactions and overall business efficiencies. To do this, just click on the menu icon on any column, then choose the columns that you want to see on screen. You can also resize, resort and filter these columns to your liking. That's it for this update. Thank you for watching and keep an eye out for our future releases as we strive to remove desktop dependency for all of our Sage 200 customers. For more information on Sage 200 professional standard or education, you can view our online help files here. Or our knowledge base here.